Hey, hey, I'm Matt, and welcome to the first video of 2018. I'm just gonna get myself set up here a moment. I'll quick set for my coffee. Pop that down, get the iPad out as well. Now, those of you which are on the live version, please let me know if, if the audio is nice and clear, uh, and if the video is nice and clear as well, that'd be fantastic. Now, if it's your first time here, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. Uh, this episode is not going to be kind of like your usual one, which maybe you wish you were used to, uh, is that in short I've got a lot of foam uh, here which I'd like to get through and plus it's a damn good chance for us to catch up post Christmas uh, and have a chit chat uh, and see what's going on and uh, I'm just waiting for uh, uh, my uh, dude, uh, iPad to catch up. So uh, with that said, uh, again, I've had to do myself some notes. Uh, what are we going to be covering in this live episode? Number one uh, is that I've got five unboxings. I've got a Hunter. Uh, that turned up this morning. Really looking forward to that. <laughs> Bundle of fun. I saw it on um, uh, Andrew Newton's channel uh, before Christmas. Completely forgot about it. The wife walked in the office this morning uh, and I thought it was a power supply which I'd ordered. And I thought, well, that's well wrapped and there's no way I'm going to fit that in the box. Open it up and I had that in it. I was well happy. Uh, we got the Fairwing as well. Expect a damn good slating on that one. Uh, we got the Skywalker Smart as well. Already tell you thumbs up for that one. Uh, and we got the Shining as well. So we're going to be looking at five different models and we're going to be going off topic as well. Uh, now, we'll also be covering, Matt, where have you been for the last month? Uh, oh, there's an update for the Facebook group as well. Uh, and a general chit-chat about 2017 and also this year, 2018. So I hope that kind of sets the tone uh, for this. And you have to excuse me, my um, iPad is still catching up. So I'm just going to quickly run to the desktop just to make sure uh, the audio and everything is all right. I can see your chat now on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, looks like everything is working good. So yes, happy days. Apologies, my uh, iPad is still trying to catch up with all the chat uh, which we've done. So uh, with that said, let's get ourselves onto topic. Now, like I said, I've got five wings models to unbox. We'll be doing that live right here in a few minutes time. We've got some other stuff which we need to cover off first. Uh, so yeah. Um, Matt, where have you been for the past month or so? I'm sure that's a good question on many of your minds. I know it's popped up in the Facebook group numerous times. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, a Facebook group, uh, there's a link to a Facebook group uh, in the video description below. Uh, and it's kind of like, well, it was always meant as like the after party to the RC coffee chats. But uh, uh, yeah, it's just a Facebook group. There's over 2,200 of us in there now. Really nice people in that group. Uh, super helpful. Uh, and... Uh, that, like I said, that that question has come up numerous times. Matt, where have you been? Uh, in short, I'm all good, all's well. Uh, it, in short, I've had two rooms to decorate, and now we're not talking like, oh, let's stick a bit of wall or give it a lick of paint. This is like back to stonework, and it is like natural stonework, which I've had to go back to, uh, plastering, wallpapering, painting, uh, you name it, electrics going on at the same time as well. It's a full blown renovation and it's two, and they're not small rooms, they're big rooms as well. And my deadline was to get those sorted by Christmas, which, thank fuck, they were done by Christmas. So uh, Matt was in the good books with Granny. Uh, also, I was preparing for 27, 2018 this year as well. Now that may seem daft, but I don't really do New Year's, New Year's resolutions, or though to be honest, Matt does need to, to lose a few pies from around his waist. But on a serious point, I knew that New Year's was coming up and I'd already worked out what my personal goals were uh, for 2018. And I started preparing in November, uh, believe it or not. So uh, I did spend some time and I've spent a lot of time uh, learning a new programming language. I've had a shed load of coding to get done. Uh, and yeah, some just personal stuff and work stuff, which I've just needed to focus upon uh, at this time of the year. Again, because I'm my, my, my other businesses are in e-commerce, uh, that's typically the busiest time of the year for customers, uh, which then means it's the quietest time for me uh, and my business partners. So that's the time which we are used to, to, to try and be super busy and get like a month or so uh, ahead of myself. So apologies, uh, I am still around, I am quite alive. I had a fantastic Christmas. I hope you've had a fantastic Christmas too. Uh, I saw James in the chat uh, a few minutes ago. He'd been in, uh, Santa had been and bought him a hardcore 44 and a 24, which is well happy days. Uh, so good boy on that one. Uh, you're gonna love that 44, uh, crazy thing to say the least. 
Right, so um, uh, what else have I got on my notes here? Um, yeah, an update for the Facebook group. Now, the thing is, is that with the Facebook group, it was like, like I said, it was really meant, and I need to go and just check my notes on here, uh, is that it was really meant to to be uh, like a chit chat after one of, live, one of the, either a live event or a video. So we could continue the conversation because uh, it's great that underneath this video, you can leave a comment and you can ask questions and stuff, but there's always such a lag in those, the lag between YouTube actually making the notification for that someone's left a comment to me getting back or someone else getting back in. Again, there is a community side to YouTube, but it's not as rapid or responsive is the right words, which I'm looking for as compared to Facebook. So that's the reason why we chose why I chose Facebook and uh, the group has got very big. Now, the thing is, is that what I've unfortunately noticed is that over the past, say, month, maybe two months, uh, is that there's been more and more multi-rotor posts going up. People just posting, oh, look at my quad flight. Uh, and the thing is, I'm not really interested in quadcopters, and that was never the purpose of the Facebook group either. And again, just being the reality is that there's plenty of other fantastic uh, Facebook groups dedicated to quadcopters and multi-rotors, and that's what they're focused upon. And I have no interest. I mean, like really no interest in them at all. So uh, some of which I've asked the administrators in the Facebook group to, to be very, uh, be proactive. So if you're watching this, if you're Steve, for example, or Martin or Lauren, for example, uh, one of the, the Facebook moderators, please uh, just apply a little bit of common sense when it comes to uh, quad uh, posts on there. Obviously, if you're using a quad to take a, uh, some video footage of a wing, for example, that's all good. Happy days. Uh, but just random quad flights, no interest. There's plenty of other groups. Just direct them on to another group. OK, uh, in short. So a little bit of a refocus for the Facebook group. Uh, for 2018 in short. Uh, now, let's have a little chat about 2017, okay? Now, 2017, in short, I was absolutely blown away by so many cool people like you who I met. And it, it was absolutely brilliant. And as many of you know, you've been around here for a long time, is that uh, it always was my focus. Uh, my, it was my goal for a year to post a video every single day uh, for a year, which I almost achieved, give or take a, a week or so break, a couple of times when I just really needed to really refocus upon work and catch up to, and get things up to speed. Uh, and I think in a year I posted about 800 videos and I had, and I hope you had, uh, some fun. And I mean a lot of fun while we were doing it. It was really, really good fun. Uh, but the start reality, is that 2018 I have other objectives uh, and they're work related uh, and I've got quite a few things which I need to be doing personally uh, in 2018. So don't, the point which I want to make is that for as far as the Rag the Nuts Off channel goes for 2018 uh, is that we won't be as ferocious as we were in 2017. And what I mean was by ferocious is it was every single day. And I always had like a dozen videos in my back pocket, just in case I wanted a day or two off uh, in the background. I don't intend to be at that kind of velocity this year. Uh, instead, we will just see how things progress in short. So um, that is my goal for 2018 is not to, um, uh, not to leave you in the lurch is probably the best term of phrase for that. Uh, but instead uh, just, be around, in short, and share my adventures. And right now, we've got a couple of models. We, like I said, we'll take a look at those uh, in a few moments time. I've also got another pair of free models down there to, to look at as well, which needs to get unboxed. We'll do another live episode for those. Uh, and it really is, yeah, 2018 for me is, I, I have no agenda for Rag the Nuts Off and YouTube. As stuff comes up, we'll get a video out. If stuff doesn't, something doesn't come up, then we won't get a video out, in short. Uh, but I'll always be around. Uh, and the Facebook group, like I said, is always open. Uh, and there's a link to that in the video description. Just press the join button on the right hand side uh, and one of us will pick up your request. And like I said, there's over 2,200 cool people like me and you. What loads really cool people, which I met with you on fire because of YouTube last year. So, right. Let's get on to, uh, right, so uh, again, I was just using my notes on there. Right, now, I'll tell you what, like I said, this I've got a bit of a structure, but I'm going to go off topic almost straight away, which is the, 
there is this one little saying, and I've had it in a, I've had it, in the, I've had it like in my back pocket, uh, and that's another one for a different day. Uh, I've had this one, in my, and I hope that you, my intention is so that you can use it uh, because it's brilliant when you can drop it. Uh, and I've had this one in my back pocket for months. Okay, I think the last time I used it was last Christmas, uh, and the missus cried her eyes out with laughter at this one. Uh, is that in, here in the UK we have a saying that you need to mind your P's and your Q's. So uh, please and thank yous in short. Uh, and the thing is, is that, that you can play on those words and say please and, fa and fuck yous in short. Uh, and if you say it quick enough, some people just don't grasp it. So uh, like I said, I've been saving this one all year just for that right moment to drop it out. And I was at the top of the stairs because we were going over to my parents to see them uh, on Christmas day evening. Uh, and we were just leaving and all the kids were getting ready. And I was like, shouting down to H. Oh, H, have you been in time the kids to mind their peas and fuck yous? And she, she almost missed it. And uh, yeah. So, uh, like I said, uh, it, it, that was just one thing which just kind of made my year. Managed to drop that one out, being in my back pocket um, for <laughs> the entire year. And I was really chuffing myself that I could get that one out. And I hope that you can use that one as well uh, in the future. Because it, I always find it kind of amusing. Uh, especially when you've got a specific say and then you get the right context and everything just comes in right. Uh, and it goes through. Uh, also, uh, talking about New Year's as well. Um, we have a, well, Granny has a house which she rents out, and uh, like I said, we are going off topic, so uh, no apologies. Um, <laughs> it's that, uh, unfortunately, uh, we had some phone calls at four o'clock in the morning from the neighbours complaining about the noise. Uh, so um, Matt popped around, because um, I'm sorry, it was a little bit boring when it came to New Year's, uh, and um, I kind of uh, went to bed at eight o'clock for New Year's Eve, and then I got up at six o'clock and then thought, Balls. There's going to be no coffee shops open, so I had a bit of a lie-in, to be honest, and got up at 8 o'clock. It was fantastic. Uh, anyway, point being, popped over to the lodges. Three students, three girls, uh, and then went round and knocked on all the windows with the wine bowl, which I found in the back garden, and woke them up. And I kindly reminded them that there are neighbours, all sides, uh, including the family. Uh, and I don't think that went down very, down very well for their New Year's. I think I set that one off with the right tone. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> uh, just looking at your chat. And by the way, as you can see here, is that we've got one main camera in front of us and we've got a web camera above our head. Uh, and I'm here using the iPad uh, just to look at your chat, which you can see down the right hand side of the screen. Uh, as we're going through. So uh, I will pause for a few moments um, just to have a look at your chat as well. Uh, <laughs> what Penny called social services. You can see this in the chat. Called social services. Told that Matt they abandoned me. He said that I'm 52 and they didn't care. <laughs> Penny, that's quality. Happy days. Right, anyway, uh, let's get into the main topic of today, which was to, uh, like I said, I've had a collection of models turn up and I, I, I just want to share some of you, like my, my experiences with you. Now the first one is that I hope that's coming out. It's a, a DW uh, Shining. Okay, so uh, DW Dancing Wings is the company name. Now some of their models have been shite. Okay, there's no two ways about it. Uh, one of them we did put in a cement mixer and set fire to it. However, uh, that little rainbow wing, that little 600 little tiny little rainbow wing, I've flown it low. It's absolutely really enjoyable. Uh, and the thing is, I was looking at this one and because I actually made it well. <laughs> Again, I'm, I, I'm not afraid, afraid to share my mistakes. And again, perhaps a mistake not actually doing a proper review on it is that last year I bought the Hobby King, uh, what was it? I think I even forgot what it was called. I was so, uh, the Wargo, which was the Yak 55. And I was so disappointed with that model. And I mean, really disappointed. Frankly speaking, I should have bought a Hummer 3D instead because it was cheaper, better, more robust. Uh, and yeah, really like wholly disappointed with it. But uh, I know that with my, I, I so much, so enjoy my, uh, I've got an S back up there on the wall. Really, really enjoy that. Again, when you've got that perfect morning when there's no wind, it is just fantastic for 3D. Uh, and excuse me, my Hummer 3D, I gave it away to Andy absolutely ages ago. Uh, and I wanted a replacement for it. And the Yak 55 really did fall short on my expectations. Uh, so I saw this one and I bought it. Now, uh, you may want it, I'm going to do the, the unboxing on it, which is um, a bit bare. And the reason for that is that 
I've had very little time over the past month and a half to do much, but what time I have had, uh, I have literally just, there's only one model which I've been chipping away at, uh, in this one, and again, I've, I've only just like kind of put the servos in, and this is, oh, there's the microphone, uh, and that's about as far as I've been and got. And to be honest, I actually really like what they've done as part of this kit. Sometimes you can buy a kit and you can blatantly see there's been no prior thought on it at all. Uh, but the bit which I'd like to point out, and again, I hope this is going to come out on that bottom camera down there, which is hiding my coffee cup, is what they did, what they have done, it's actually given it some thought and there's little slits in there. Uh, for your servo leads, which is not something which you even got on the Wargo one, which is basically twice the bloody price. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this one, actually. Uh, I have used, uh, have reinforced all the hinges and also coated the nose area, which I hope you can see on there. The nose area is quite shiny. Uh, and I've used EP, uh, sorry, E6000 uh, on top of the EPP foam to uh, just tough it up because I know that I'm going to smash the nose in several times. Uh, I didn't like the paper hinges which they provided, so I have used my own little plastic hinges uh, in the uh, rudder uh, area itself. But besides that, yeah, it's a very simple build, but that is as close, well, as far as I've been and got. I've, it does come with this little section to put some landing gear in there, but to be honest, landing gear on these models uh, is a complete waste of time. Uh, and to be honest, I've been quite impressed with it. I don't know how much I paid for it. Uh, again, I've put links to everything which we're going to cover in the video description. And again, for absolute clarity, something which I'd like to be 100% clear on, uh, is that those links are affiliate links. So if you use any of those, go on to make a purchase that you will be supporting this channel. Something which I, like I said, i like to be 100% clear about. Uh, anyway, so I can't remember how much this one costs, but I actually really kind of like it. It's been very, very simple to build. The only modification which I've made which is no surprise to any of you out there, is that I've put some extra carbon in it. Um, it's just the way I am. Uh, and I did put a little bit of extra carbon uh, in the middle. Uh, besides that, really like the kit, really straightforward. Uh, I did just flex out and trim out a little bit of the foam inside the, the surfaces themselves, but there's plenty of movement in there and it looks like it'll take one or two good smacks in the ground uh, before it completely disintegrates, which for a 3D model, is quite a lot, uh, considering uh, the amount of use and how many repairs which I had to do on the Hummer 3D, uh, the whole nose area turned out to be getting covered in balsa wood uh, just to make it s to survive. Uh, that one looks like it will survive for a while uh, without getting too much abuse. Now, let me give you that out of the way. I will get back uh, to uh, your live comments as well. Now, if you are watching the recorded version, don't forget you can leave your questions or comments in the comment section underneath this video as well. I will get back to you sooner uh, or later. Uh, could you tilt up uh, Aideron up, please? Uh, yeah, give me a second there, stick mix. Uh, it's a stupid amount of movement upwards, but you are restricted downwards. So just for stick mix, I'll put that on the side. On the side. So you, you are restricted downwards like that. But you've got unlimited up and it will catch the top of the model uh, on there. So yeah. If anything, it depends how wild you're going to want to go. And again, if you're going to, I'll probably end up doing this on mine. I'll probably end up cutting a little bit more uh, of an angle out of the foam on the bottom. Uh, so I can end up with some extra movement in the ailerons themselves. Um, just because we like to fly them pretty crazy. Uh, in short, let's have a quick look. Uh, Grumpsy says, I, uh, is Sir David and Sir Andrew uh, going to return? Yes, absolutely. And Sir Craig as well. I'm sure we'll see them all in the new year as well at some point. I am the only flying which I've done, besides a little bit out the front, uh, is uh, it was just after Christmas on the Thursday. I uh, went to Western Supermare up the far end, uphill, of those of you which know the area, uh, and had an absolute blast on the uh, sands. Uh, and I had so much fun. Uh, that's what I did to my flying blade. Uh, that was a propeller on the back of there. And I hit that ground hard <laughs> at full Dakar as well. Uh, so that one is in the uh, repair pile, uh, which we were just chatting about before we started. So um, yeah, happy days. Right, uh, let's start with a little bit of a disappointing model. Okay, so that was the um, shiny, and I'll let you know how that one flies very well shortly, because that's the one which I've been working on. Uh, this next one is frankly really disappointing. Can you see how mangled this box is? Um, and I, I know I did a little video on this one, 
uh, before Christmas, but I, I'm still pretty pissed off by it because it's utter shite boxing. That's the thing, remember, is that I didn't get any of these for freebies, I bought them out of my own money, so I'm not that impressed with them. And I, I really need to get around and shoot Banggood an email about it because every time I look at it, every time I get annoyed at it, so I'm just stuck in a box trying to stuff it out of the way. So this is the little hunter wing. Now my goal for this one was, uh, in short, what I wanted it for was just flying some a little bit of FPV in and around the house. Now I think I made a bit of a mistake is that uh, those of you which know your foams, so I don't know why, but black EPP foam, even the molded stuff, seems to be heavier than the white stuff. Uh, so this wing is quite heavy considering the size of it. I think I've got some scales here, yeah. Just give me a sec. We'll stick it on the scales and we'll see how heavy it really is. So try and put it down flat. There we go. Oh, stick me mug on it. Right. That's ounces, clear. I'm going to step my mug on it. Yeah, it's 154 grams, which I don't know why. It kind of feels heavy uh, for that model. Uh, and yeah, and the other bit about it, that box was so rubbish. I don't know if you can see that on the uh, camera up here. All the ends all bent to buggery, which I'm not very impressed about. Also, uh, inside the uh, here, you on top, you'll see that we've got one servo connector and we've got one battery connector so that's the whatever type the not jst is it jst yeah uh the just red whatever we call the jst red sockets uh for the battery and this one here is actually for the receiver uh, and it goes into a little flight control board in there so there's obviously a stabilizer in there but there is absolutely no instructions with it at all so like i said not that impressed about the little hunter to be honest and again as always, we always hold our final judgment until we get it to fly because it could fly like a complete peach, uh, even with its bent in little wingtips at the top, which will cause it to fly slower than perhaps than what it should. Uh, but I did buy this one for just little FPV in, in and around actually the house. We've got some trees at the top, so uh, I was going to have a little spin around with that one, see how it does. Um, I don't know. In short, that's the little hunter. Um, I hope it'll be right. I did buy the plug and play kit, which I strongly suggest that you don't buy, uh, mainly because I'm short of time. That I'm, I'm very time poor at the moment, uh, as you may have guessed. So uh, plug and play kits, uh, I don't feel that plug and play kit would be exceptional value for money for you. Uh, but the reason being is that you could buy a little motor for a couple of quid, two little servos and ESC, and not gonna break the bank. And it definitely does uh, the only benefit for going for the plug and play kit is that it, uh, you've got speed on your side for the build, uh, which is something which I wanted at the time. Uh, but personally, I would suggest that you go for the kit version, not the plug and play version. So yeah, that's the little, uh, what was it, FTC Hunter. A bit underwhelmed is the word which I'm looking for. Uh, so have a quick look at your chat. Uh, let's have a quick look. And there, uh, stick carp angler, <laughs> right. Um, Elijah says you can probably heat up the tip uh, and bend it. Uh, the, yes, absolutely. Hey, Andrew, I am back indeed. Um, so yeah, Elijah, yeah, really good tip. Those of you which uh, have not don't know about this with EPP foam especially, and you can do this with EPO as well. Uh, if you've got a bent part, is that you can put it in some warm water and it will uh, reform itself. The reality to that one, Elijah, is that it's just too flimsy uh, and is almost like a manufacturing flaw, if that makes sense. Let me just make a point. So not only did the manufacturer provide a useless box, uh, is that that bit of foam at the back, I hope you can see that on the camera, is so thin and so flimsy, is that it would bend and if it's again, it's taken that shape over a long period of time and it will go back, but it will always be flimsy. Um, so yeah, hey ho, like I said, we always hold off final judgment until we get the models of fly. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, mm. Mark has just been asked a great question and it's a fantastic question. I wanna bring this one up right now, which is Mark has, are you ever going to post a flight test video of the Sonic model HD wing? So Mark, I do have the maiden footage uh, in the video files there somewhere. Frankly forgotten where it is, it's been so long. 
However, what I can tell you is that HD Wing, which was the same as the, uh, there was a Hobby King version as well, uh, and then, um, what was it, RCMC also had a version of it as well, uh, Maku or something like that, uh, it flies absolutely bloody fantastic. Okay, Mark, um, it's a great wing, it flies really, really well, I sloped it, uh, I sloped that wing with a 5200 4S pack in it, uh, and it did <laughs> fantastically well. Uh, in short, really, really surprised on that one. Uh, the biggest tip for the Sonic Model HD wing was make sure she is nose heavy. Uh, I did jiggle around with the CG, she bit me, and I had a death spiral on it um, because uh, I put the CG too far back. So make sure that wing is definitely nose heavy. Besides that, it does fly fantastically well. Now, also, Mark, I want to say thanks because uh, you, you kind of raise an important point. What you cannot see uh, is off camera uh, is that I have uh, approximately, and I say approximately, about 20 models which need work on, okay? Uh, so uh, again, I'll give you a quick idea of what's going on down here at the side. I have, uh, my I broke my mini talon, um, overloaded it with an 8000 battery, didn't give it a hard enough chuck, stupid girls throw, uh, and it went wolf, 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 and went upside down properly broken my mini talent not that impressed with myself about that um, quite frustrating to say the least uh, so that one I've got a spare one here that needs to get built that's a big build for me because uh, the amount of components in there although I have already been and made the wiring uh, looms rip so it should expedite things and I've got template to follow uh, I've got the biplane mini talent to do as well the mini drac is in the pile to get fixed because I took the vector out because the vector needs to go in the uh, full size Sky Hunter, which is on the other side, needs to sort that out. I've got an Edge 540 down there, the uh, Zo HD Dart. Um, I'm still 50 50 on that Zo HD Dart, to be honest. I think it could be better. And I can't. Yeah, we need to review that one properly. Uh, in short, I broke the servo control horn on it. Uh, and basically, there's 20 plus models down there, which I need to get around, get some time to, to fix and in short. Uh, and I've got a collection of new stuff which needs to get out and we're getting to get on video for you. So, uh, Mark, I am, uh, what should we call it, very strapped for time, okay? So I will get to these things as and when I can over the course of 2018. So I'm not going to say it's going to take me a year to get to these things. I'm just saying I've got a lot here in the backlog which I need to get to. And that brings me on, yes, Stitmix, I do require help repairing. And let's change things. Um... This one, so we've gone from a model which, the, the, what was it, the DW Shining, really quite impressed by that, to be honest. Added a bit of extra carbon, no big surprise there for any of you, I'm sure. Uh, the FTC Hunter, a little bit disappointed, to be honest, uh, on there. Could have been so much more, and frankly pissed off that they, they can fucking package it properly. Um, annoyed me. So, let's change gears and make it a little bit more positive now. Because this one, I'm really impressed with. And I genuinely mean that. I really am impressed with it. Because, and you will be in a moment soon. Now, this is really frustrating because this one's been sat on the desk. And I think some of you have already had a sneak peek at this. But uh, we'll open it up and have a take a quick look while we got it here. Now, there's some other stuff in there. There's a spa. There's a bag. Oh, with a nice little aluminium mate. I'll get those out. We'll have a look at those in a moment. We've got a HD. Oh, yeah. Chuck that in there. You also get some stickers as well, which I probably believe won't uh, use, and I'm sure you can see that up on the camera. So let me just move that down there out of the way. This one, I'm actually genuinely impressed by it because, well, I like it because it's a twin motor wing, which is not something you normally see, is it? When was the last time you saw a twin motor uh, F, well, a flying wing? Well, the last one I saw was that one down there, which was the Tech Sumo. Uh, and I did that a short while ago, uh, which was bloody good fun, by the way. Uh, but as far as a model which was purposely designed to have uh, two motors, I've not seen one. Have you? Like, literally out of the box, something you can buy off the shelf. Uh, and uh, this is, that's exactly what this one is. This is the Skywalker Smart. Again, no idea on pricing, I'm afraid. It's been ages since I bought it. Uh, there's my better half. I'm just going to get a fresh cup of coffee, am I? Thank you. I'll do a swap. Cheers, beautiful. Are you not going to say anything with the camera? No, he's just going to wave. <laughs> Thanks, beautiful. Um, right. Need to get this one the right way up. Uh, yeah, Skywalker Smart. Purposely designed to have, and I hope you can see this on the camera, two motors on the back. 
And again, just to add to the little layer of quality to this one, I'll get this bag open so you, you'll see what I mean, is that they didn't skimp out on the motor mates. What was it? The... Oh, it was a black one. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was that... I'll go and get it a second. It was the uh, Reptile S670. I was so disappointed about this one. It had so much promise, and it was completely over-engineered to the point of it being annoying. Uh, and the motor mount was utter crap. But can you see that on the camera? The state of that motor mount? And I think I've got the... Oh, yeah, there's the other bit down here on my desk, which I missed out on the review video, which I couldn't find it. It's just there. And such a crap implementation of a motor mount. So, uh, by the way, Andy, that one's for you uh, when I see you next. That's why it's sat over there by my door. But the Skywalker Smart, look at that. They've actually given it some time and some thought to make a proper motor mount for the back, which will sit up and screw in up underneath. Maybe that's coming out on that camera, okay? So it sits in and then mounts in there and it's a proper motor mount, unlike the other piece of rubbish which we had over there. So yeah, Skywalker, which I'm sure was a brand that most of you have come across before, uh, really have put some thought and some energy into that and it really does show. So well done Skywalker, I'm most impressed with that. Also, I do quite like, I won't be using it because I'm going, well, I haven't got any X, um, XT30 connectors, is that they did include that, which is a wiring loom to take an XT60 and move it into either GSTs or XT30s, which is exactly what you need to be able to split out into a pair of ESCs uh, for your motors. So I thought that was a really nice touch as well. So yeah, like I said, this one's a bit more positive than the other POS, which we saw a few moments ago, uh, because someone has actually taken some time and effort uh, to think about the actual model's construction itself. Now talking about the model construction, the bit which I like most about this model, besides the quality motor mounts, is can you see, I'll put this up on the camera, on there, there we go. Can you see the sheer amount of glue area to attach the wings with, okay? Absolutely oodles of glue space, which is uh, always a good challenge. Like for example, um, it's like the Wing Wing Z84, but even bigger, okay? So if you consider the amount of space uh, or area which you've now got to glue on there, it's gonna be loads of glue in there, it's gonna be loads of strength. Uh, I personally will most likely be using Yoohoo Piss Paw uh, for it, but I won't be leaving it to tack off completely because you've still got a strange angle to get it in there. Uh, and I also know that it will go yellow. Uh, I might try E6000 glue on it, but we'll see at the time uh, when we get around to building it. Uh, a little note is that the servos are top mounted. Now, why is to why would why are top mounted servos better for wings than lower mounted uh, bottom mounted servos? Uh, number one, uh, you're less likely to rip off uh, the servo uh, control horn. Now, for models like the uh, C1 Chaser or the FX61 or or FX79, uh, which do have bottom mounted servos, normally you get little you can put little protectors on there, um, and they're, they're they're normally okay. However, oh, actually, the C1 Chaser is on top because they got it right. The other thing which I noticed, the other thing which I found from my own personal experience is like in the Wing Wings Z84, because the servos are bottom mounted, it feels like the servo doesn't have enough oomph in it to push the uh, aileron surface up, or well, the elevon surface up, uh, so that if you're on a really, really steep dive, is that sometimes your servos can crap out, not have enough torque in them, and the servo being mounted having to push. Uh, rather than pull, I don't know why. I don't know why this is again. It's just from my own experience. Uh, is the in short bottom mount servos don't seem to have the same amount of torque as top mounted servos. Uh, so positive. My getting to my point. Positive side is top mounted servos for here. Good thing. Uh, one negative which I have noticed. You may have picked this out. Uh, again, I'll just put this up on the camera, up on that top camera. I hope it focuses okay. Is that it is not the best molding. Ever, I've ever seen on the top of the wing. In fact, the right hand wing is, I don't know if you can see these little, let me, so I can point this out with an Allen key. I don't know if you can see that, wherever the camera's just gone. 
uh, there is a tiny little hole in there um, but there's several of those all the way across the wing um, so yeah the molding is not as good as what I've seen for other parts um, or for other models it's only on the wings the main sensor section is fine of course it's really not going to affect the flight characteristics greatly uh, in short it's just more of an aesthetics thing uh, and to be honest, I sort of might end up end up laminating this one anyway so it won't be the end of the world and I'll probably end up bubbling it too uh, you will need to cut out the element surfaces again a nice little thing it just shows that they did put some time and effort and energy to these which is that we do have a plywood block uh, in the elevon surface as well again stops with uh, warped deflection uh, in the actual surface uh, in the surfaces themselves no idea on the wingspan completely forgot I'd say about a meter something like that on the wingspan maybe just over maybe a little bit less don't really know can't remember to be honest as far as the fuselage goes, uh, it has a purple head uh, and a purple skid uh, on it, which I will be frankly honest, did amuse me lots when I first opened the box because I said, oh, look, it's got a purple head. Um, and Matt being age 12 and one quarter giggled quite a lot. But uh, hey ho. Uh, in short, the fuselage area, as we can see, it is really designed for FPV. You'll see that you've got a pod in here for your camera. Uh, nice big chunky battery bay in there. I am very curious. I don't, again, I, realistically, I don't think this model was ever designed to put a 5200 4S pack in it. But we'll stuff one of those in. Because if that fits, then uh, it'll probably take any. Well, anything smaller than in short. So this is a Multistar 5200 4S pack. Uh, and that will fit. Okay, I, I say it will fit. Uh, <laughs> in there I don't know if the lid will go down I, you will pro yes in reality uh, if you wanted to fit a 5200 4s pack in there um, you will need to cut into this lid to get the cables around in fact you'll probably want to mount it in that way uh, there are two big chunks of plywood so if that makes it nose heavy it's going to be or makes it grossly nose heavy then hey you are going to be grossly nose heavy uh, for it uh, Nice little construction inside. Again, huge bay at the back, which is kind of what you need it because you can have two ESCs in there. There wasn't a mounting point for the ESCs, although you could be, if I just grab one of these motor mounts a second, I hope this is coming out on the camera okay, is that what you could do is that mount your motor on there and then also mount your ESC down here as well because again, there's uh, normally I'd put stuff like that on the top of a model. But if you're, you've you got high airflow underneath, um, whereas the, if you put it inside the actual fuselage itself, it wouldn't get any well any real heat dissipation because there is no real uh, airflow route through the actual model itself. But what you could do, again, those of you who have maybe flown quads before, you're very used to this, is that cut your motor wire short uh, and then uh, maybe work out some attachment mechanism down here and put your ESCs here underneath the wing. So you run your main power leads out uh, and do it that way that would definitely work so yeah plenty of battery room in there of course a 2200 3s or a 2200 4s would uh, obviously fit in there fine that wouldn't be an issue in that size bay uh, there is a second um, head uh, for uh, the uh, top or the nib of the the model uh, which is set up for I presume I mean, that's a GoPro session uh, kind of head which it's got on there uh, again purple uh, as well which <laughs> Um, abuse me slightly so yeah um, going from a lesser kit to a much better quality kit um, I think probably they're for like for like they weren't that far off pricing to be honest uh, and one of them is far superior in its build quality uh, that isn't carbon fiber that looks more like glass fiber so, yeah it's glass fiber it sounds like glass fiber uh, and it does come with some very very cool fins uh, on the side I don't know if you could see that but they have been an etched in Skywalker uh, in there so yeah all in all I really like that kit so I'm just going to take a few moments just to squeeze that back in its box uh, definitely won't be using the stickers because they don't really do it for, well stickers don't really do it for me but the model not bad at all in fact apologies let me just uh, sign back into the iPad before I uh, stuff this one away completely if you have any questions please do just ask uh, about any of these remember all these models um, I did buy out of my own money, so they're not sent to me as freebies for review. Uh, they are ready for my own abuses. Uh, 
uh, and, and abuse we, we talk, spoke about abuse uh, a few moments ago uh, and I have 20 plus models down there which I have been in have abused unfortunately uh, and they are sat <laughs> there waiting to get repaired uh, let's quickly move to your comments so again you can see the chat going along at the same time uh, let's have a quick look that's because you bent the push rod if you push rather than pulling. Uh, FG, dude, that is a curious one because I think I carbon fibred my push rods in the wing wing because I knew it was 4S and I knew it was going to be crazy fast. But it could, of course, be uh, the surface bending. It could have been a combination. I think it could be the push rod bending. Uh, it's probably a combination of facts. There's probably not enough current going to the servos for the speed because we were uh, over propping. Uh, and overpowering the motor and the ESC as well, which we all do from time to time. Uh, let's have a quick look. Tension is easier for a servo on the push rod rather than compression. I, I totally agree with you on that one. Daytona FPV. Uh, wouldn't a hat pack make it? <laughs> uh, could be, could be indeed. Uh, Right, and I can see this conversation going on about a C1 Chaser or similar model in there as well. Right, moving on, what do we have next? Uh, next one is, let's go. Like I said, this was going to be a roller coaster. Well, if I didn't say it was going to be a roller coaster, guess what? It's going to be a roller coaster ride uh, because we've had good crap, good time to get to the crap. Now, this is the fair wing. Okay, uh, and again, I want to make this 100% clear, but out of my own money, I was approached by four different companies to review this wing, and I told them all exactly the same. As far as I'm concerned, the manufacturer took a look at the Reptile S800 wing and made it bad in every single way possible, and then doubled the price. So I can already immediately tell you I'm not really a big fan of this wing at all because as far as I'm concerned, they looked at what was a good model and made it bad in every single way. So what am I talking about? Why is it bad in every single way? Well, number one is cost. This fair wing is twice the price of a Repsol S800. Is it going to be twice as good for the money? Reality. Probably not. And again, remember, we always hold off uh, final judgment uh, until we get the wing out and flown. Now, this is like this is the first time I've been in this box myself. Uh, so I'll tell you what, let's get, we'll work our way through it. So I'll move that over to one side. You can have a look at the same time. And uh, it's been sat here for blooming ages. Uh, and uh, there, there you go. It's a prime example where I was saying it was like the S800 made bad in every single way. And I'm just seeing I've got the Repsol S800 up here so we can use it as a reference. I think I'll pop that down there as a reference. So this is the Reptile S800. Uh, fantastic wing, super cheap. Uh, by the way, a little tip for those, those of you which have got an S800 wing uh, and want to get more flight time out of it for your battery is the, again, I don't know what brand that is, but it's an A, I think that's coming out on the camera, okay? It's an A2212 10T 1400 kV motor. So it's not even a branded one, it's just a cheapo one. It's 1400 kV with, I think it's a seven by five prop, which I run with a 30 amp ESC. You'll notice that I've, this is the second one I've had, and this is my keeper. Uh, and uh, I've mounted the ESC up back here. Uh, and I run this with a 2200 4S pack, loads and loads of flight time. When I want some speed, I've got loads of speed in there because again, it's uh, it, it's basically uh, overpowered uh, well, too much 4S for that motor and prop combination is too much. So it's got plenty of speed in it, but also on the flip side, it's just, you can see the mud. I hope you can see the mud on there. Just look at the state at the front of that one. It's absolute plastic and mud. It's my basher wing. I'll fly that in and around the trees as low as I dare and as close as I dare. And heck, it's taken so many hits. Uh, I've broken the camera. Remember, some of you may remember the review which we did on the ECAN 4K camera, good camera. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of broke the screen on the back of it uh, when I clobbered a tree. So anyway, that's the Reptile S800. Uh, the first one I gave away, I had it for a while, uh, and it was great wing and short, and it, it's super cheap, so like 30 quid. This one is more like 50, 60 quid, uh, including the add-ons and stuff. Now, the battery bay, so if you think about the S800, is that you need perhaps 
if we if we were sat in the in the shoes of the web uh, the designers is that maybe we would make the wingspan a, wing, wingspan a little bit bigger uh maybe we'd make a bigger battery bay more potential for larger motors and things like that for the reptile s800 again taking on the feedback from uh what the community and pilots might start like myself and you have uh for the s800 but no they completely bloody ignored that uh so what we are left with is a much smaller uh believe it or not is that you let me get made a point on this one i'm pre pretty damn sure on this one uh that you can fit i need to find a decent size 4s which annoyingly is not kicking around because i've had all those out they are here somewhere that's an 1800 there's one of those and one of those again using the videos which i saw or the for photos which I saw originally is that yeah you can just about fit that's that's a zippy 2200 forest pack uh when I originally saw this one so number one I'm I'd like to say I'm wrong on this when I originally saw this wing they only showed it with a 1300 free s pack in it and it only looked like they just fit in there but you, you can actually get a 2200 forest pack in there uh, I've got a bigger 2200 uh graph graphing pack which won't fit, fit in there easily unless, well, yeah, you'll need to get the knife out in and the lid definitely won't fit. Also, I just want to quickly check that with that 4S pack. Um, and you'll see, uh, those of you on there, on the little camera in the bottom corner, is that you'll see they've got the zipper tie in there because that's where they're expecting you to put the battery. And if you put, <coughs> excuse me, if you put your battery in there, it won't fit. And I don't think you're going to get that lid to fit down with a 2200 4S. Get that the right way round. All right, I stand corrected. You can get the lid down with a 2200 4S, but you are going to run a little bit short on there. So actually, I'm surprised by that. Uh, what I'm also surprised is how weak that motor mount area is. I don't know. Can you see this on the camera? So there's the back end for the motor mount. Well, hopefully they've got a motor mount, motor, dedicated motor mount in there, which we'll find in a moment. But can you see in there? Can you see just in there? How much, I'm going to stick my finger in it, how much empty space on the back of there. So if you're using a bigger, or sorry, a low, a bigger motor but lower torque, you can imagine how much oomph those motors have got. I can see that twist in that back frame. Uh, and again, thinking about a landing as well, there's not a lot of foam in there to take like the repetitive landing uh, with wings when you, when you bring your model down and that that, that propeller fin gets knocked uh, around straight. If it's a big fin, big prop, which you're running on the back, I don't think that's gonna last long term. So yeah, it's curiosity. So positive, you can fit a 2200 4S in there. You won't fit a larger graphene pack in there, but you can fit a 2200 4S, one of the zippy packs in there. Um, that was a surprise because they only showed it would have been a 1300 uh, and you can see why because they only put it in the front. In the nose area, if I pop that bit of foam out, you do have a section in there, I presume for a GoPro. Hopefully they've got another bit of foam in the nose uh, in there. Uh, and that also looks like a little run cam mount in there too. Um, yeah, so right now I am a little bit corrected. I thought we were gonna be uh, under, we were gonna be restricted on battery side, which is why I wasn't a big fan of it to begin with. Uh, but that said, taking a look at it, we can fit 2200 Forest in it, so that's happy days. But that motor mount area is definitely weak, uh, to say the least. So let's go and move that S800 out of the way. On the desk. What else have we got on it? Now, I did, like again, I did buy the plug and play kits. Uh, again, because I'm short on time. And short, so if they're going to supply it with a, a motor and a pair of servos, that's happy days. Uh, wing tips, EPP. Now, <coughs> I've seen this question come up in the forums numerous times. Uh, Matt, which uh, glue do you recommend for EPP? EPP, every day of the week, it will be E6000, which is readily available in most countries across the globe. Uh, on the flip side, uh, Goop Plumbing Edition uh, is also worth getting your hands on. Uh, it does stink, make sure you wear gloves with it and definitely do wear, use it in a well-ventilated area. Uh, otherwise, you'll be high as a kite, as Sometimes I can be uh, when putting these models together. Uh, and aha, brilliant. Uh, by the way, we do get some instructions. Hope that comes out on the camera okay. Basic stuff. 
complete ching mesh, but here's what it is. And some two lots of stickers, uh, which by the way, I don't know why, yeah, two sets of stickers, which by the way, they've included some red, and red on black doesn't come out very well at all. White on black would be far better. Um, just thinking back to, what was it, the original S800, which I had, which was black with red stickers. There was just no point. You couldn't see uh, the model for Toffee using their red stickers. Uh, wings do look fantastically well molded. We'll give them uh, an A star, or A plus at least, uh, for their uh, molding, because uh, it looks pretty damn good, to say the least. Uh, got a nice piece of glass fibre, I'm guessing, in the elevon. As you can see out there, nice little touch. Carbon fiber effect, don't know if it's carbon fiber on the top. Uh, control surface, again, top mounted. Uh, Aideron servo, positive there. They've even been to put a plastic strip down the leading edge. So again, that's a positive too. Uh, by the way, if you've got like a, an S800 uh, and you wanna protect your leading edge, all you need is a piece of sellotape all the way down the leading edge. It will have exactly the same effects as this hard plastic. Uh, and I've hit trees with the micro sky munter, which is hung, hanging up there. Full knacker, hit a branch, and it just spiraled in, hit the ground. Obviously, we get some ground damage, but the dent where it hit the wing, uh, it was tiny. Just a piece of sellotape down the leading edge will have exactly the same effect. Uh, so, I'll tell you what, let's go and get this one put together quickly so we can have a nose, uh, and then we'll have a quick chit chat about the other parts which we've got in here as well. So, uh, I've got a square wing, square piece, which I'm guessing is going down the back. And. I'll put these bits together. So yeah, while this was the plug and play kit, if you still have to go and put your uh, servos in uh, and connect those up. So that you are still gonna need to do some work yourself, which some kits are like that and some are not. So very, very simple to stick together. I'm guessing inside, I did see some thumb screws in one of these bags. Yes, there are some thumb screws and a motor mount in there. I assume those go in just to attach those bits together. Uh, we got, we, we've got, which is a bit odd, you've got two wingtips. You've either got EPP wingtips, which I presume you can glue on, uh, which is what, frankly, what I would do, uh, or you have some wooden ones, uh, which you can screw on. Now, I think the basis for this, or well, the premise of that is that some of you may want to take this model apart to fit in a backpack, uh, and some of you don't care, or just probably end up gluing it all together in the foot, all together anyway. Um, so they have kind of covered both bases. Um, I, I, I've never used the wooden ones, to be honest, but I, can, I, I understand why they've been in included it. So uh, semi plus for that, uh, but personally I'll just be using uh, the, the EPP ones and there's no molding pieces on there to, to help it to get the alignment right on it so you are going to have to use pins to hold it in uh, and it, again it's EPP so you need to make sure that you sand that up really well uh, to get a nice strong uh, good surface for the glue to stick on so yeah we'll see we'll see I'm just going to get these bings back in the in the uh, box and out the way now there is obviously room for those of you thinking about flight um, INAV uh, there is obviously they've been a put and there was the little mounts included in there I'll just put that up on the screen uh, up on that camera they have been included for mounting points uh, for the for INAV for example or flight control of some form also just another consideration is that we just put these side by side and I bet this thing is going to be a right speedy little wing because if you take a look at that okay they can see that on the camera let me put that one underneath I need to get the angle right because the wing cord, the thickness, is definitely thicker on the S800 compared to the fair wing. So I would expect, and again, I've not seen, uh, again, I've been too busy. I know other people review this one because it was mentioned in the Facebook group, but I haven't seen any reviews myself. But just looking at this wing, because it's such a thin cord, I would expect it to fly quite fast, to say the least. And also the wings are much further forward, so, yeah, it's going to be a quick wing. I already know that. Now, like I said, I did buy the plug and play kit, which is not really plug and play. because You have to put most of it together, and there's not, there's not really much plugging going on here. And by the looks of it, what have we got in here? So it's like we've got PDB. Uh, yeah, it'll be a power... Come on, there you come. 
so I don't want to come out of the bag. And I will just move to your comments, Mo, just to make sure I've not missed out uh, anything which you've been saying in the chat on the left-hand side. Uh, hey, Jazzy, by the way. Let's have a quick look. Uh, the S800, is this a rerun? No, it's not a rerun, uh, Jazzy. We're just looking, using that as a comparison uh, to this wing. Because I, I originally thought that uh, it was a... Like I said, I, I thought that they'd taken a look at the S800 and perhaps made it bad in every way. Again, not so big on the wingspan. Battery bay could be bigger. <clears throat> price is a big one. This thing is twice the price, at least, of the S800 kit for kit or plug and play, plug and play. Uh, this one has got, uh, again, I bought the plug and play kit because we did have the, the little LED bar on the back. Now, it does come with some cables. Uh, I didn't notice this in the instructions, but... Uh, 5 volts and signal, which I'm guessing is the yellow one. Uh, and we get a little board on here as well. So, yeah, it's just a straightforward little uh, PDB, power distribution board. Uh, we got 5 volts. Uh, we've got a dedicated connector by the looks of it for this. So, actually, that's what that board at the back is for. It's not necessarily for a flight controller. Uh, it's for their power distribution board, which has not been soldered. So, you will, if you want to use the little LEDs at the back, uh, you will need to have a soldering iron. I'm semi good soldering skills because I uh, put my hand to that as a reference. Uh, and that's how small those little pads are, uh, which is very uh, in short. And the same for the power distribution board. You've got in, you've got out. I can't see a current shunt resistor on there. Uh, it is nicely branded, but there is some dodgy wiring on their buzzer. You got an OSD on here as well. Let's have a look. Signal, signal. 5 volts, 12 volts. Yeah. Needs a little bit more research on there, but I don't think you've got an OSD on there. I've not seen a chip to do that. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just a straightforward power distribution board. Uh, there's a picture of it. I hope that's focusing uh, for you on there. So that's a nice little touch they've included in there. But they did charge you a pretty premium for basically um, probably what's going to be a crap motor uh, and some LED bars. And that's the only unique thing which I can see so far. Um, we've seen the screw on wings. We saw that in... Um, which one was it? I've got one here somewhere. The, I gave it to Andy. The um, next one on from the S800, which was made by um, Sonic Model, uh, also came out as rebranded by uh, the the guys over at Ready Made RC as well. And again, you'll have to excuse me. Uh, I f forgot the name of it. I'm sure one of you are going to stick it in uh, the chat in a moment for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, screw on wings. We, we, we saw that last year, at the end of last year, with a new model. What else do we get in here as well? Let's take a quick look. Uh, they have provided a tri-blade prop with this one. It's a dull prop, 50-45, uh, so 5x4.5. Uh, two little Emacs servos. Emacs servos, they're good. They're normally good. Not really had issues, any issues with them at all. Power lead. And yes, it's an LED bar, by the, by the way, Jazzy. Uh, and have a quick look at the motor. Let's see what we got on here. Uh, it is... An RC in power, badly printed, very small can. Uh, it's a 2205, 2000, 2550 kV motor uh, by a brand which I've never seen before. We'll get that one open. I'll pop that on the camera so you can have a quick look. Uh, AR wing. That was it, Simon. Absolutely. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, they've been included a little dial RC uh, 25 amp ESC, which... It's, I, I'm not a fan of the quad ESCs. Personally, I like to see a heat sink on them. That said, I have been recently using a quad ESC uh, on one of the wings and it's done really well. So uh, that view may change this year. Uh, that said, uh, there's the motor. Um, feels like it's got good bearings to be sure. So um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one. There's the motor itself. It's not a very deep can compared to the other 2205 motors which I've got. Is that on the camera? Yeah. Uh, if I turn it round, yeah, yeah, 2205, 2550 kV, which is a very odd kV rating. Uh, one thing which it is going to be, it's going to be very screamy, uh, to say the least, especially with a tri prop on that. Um, yeah, it's going to be curious to see what the current port actually is on this one, uh, because that's a lot of kV. 
with a tri brake propeller on it. Yeah, bit of a strange one to say the least. And my iPad's gone to sleep, so I've just been and missed your chat. And I do need to slurp a coffee uh, in a moment. So I tell you what, like I said, I said that I thought this was going to be a bit of a roller coaster. Like we said, we had some ups and some downs. Um, this is the fair wing. I, I'm actually going to stand here, slightly corrected, uh, and I'm going to say uh, I was wrong. Well, the, it, it, you look at the pictures and you'll see that you. This really is designed for a 1300 battery pack in the front, which maybe you might be able to fit a 4S, uh, 3S, in a 4S 1300 pack in the nose. Uh, it's going to be goddamn pokey. Okay, it's definitely going to be pokey. And the reason being, it's got a very high KV motor, small can, tri blade prop on there. I don't think the 25 amp ESC is going to be up to 4S, so that's a curiosity. So watch this space on there. There was no. You do have the square spark going through the motor mount, but I do feel that they have weakened the model at the back. Again, using the comparison to the S800, uh, which uh, is got a really big, thick chunk of cord uh, motor on the back. That's absolutely massive. That's not going anywhere. Whereas this one is, I feel, a lot weaker uh, in comparison. But it's a it's a much thinner profile wing. I'm going to see that on the side of the kit. Look how. If I catch that right, look how thin that profile, that wing is. So thinner profile means less drag. It also means less lift, by the way. Uh, and uh, it does mean it's going to be a quite a quick model. A uh, bit disappointed about the Elevon tips. Uh, you could either glue them on. We'll see, we could put these crappy wooden, one, wooden ones on. Again, I, they tried to fill both sides to people which want to take their wing tips off to compare to those people who, like me and probably 99% of you watching this which want to glue them on there. Um, but that said, it does look pretty cool. It's black EPP, which we all know is tough as old boots. Uh, there is a spot on either wing, okay? So very similar to the S800. There is a bay on both wings. Obviously one for your receiver, one for your video transmitter. Nice little touches in there. Uh, actually got decent Phillips screws. One thing which really annoyed me about the S800, I'm sure is annoyed every person about the Reptile S800, uh, is they, they use little hex screws. These are using Phillips screws. Happy days. Um, so yeah, a bit of a mixed bag on this one. And they do have spars going all the way along the leading edge as well underneath the wings. So to be honest, I, I wasn't that impressed with this one to, from the bits which I saw of it originally. I do feel that it's perhaps gross, no, I'm going to say grossly overpriced compared uh, to the other wings which are out there uh, for the, 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 from the Chinese sites in short. Um, the Reptile S800 could be, it's half the price. Well, it was half the price when I bought it, uh, in short. So do keep that back in the back of your mind. Also keep in the back of your mind that we always hold our final judgment on these models uh, until we actually get out and fly them. It could fly like a complete peach. I reckon it will do. Um, build time, not gonna be not very long at all. It's pretty straightforward. So it would have been nice if they glued the servos in for me and wired up the, uh, wired up the motor. Again, I'm going to have to get the solder and iron out for that. So has it fallen short on the plug and play side? Perhaps it has. Compared to the Nano Talon, for example, that really was pretty much plug and play. Stick a receiver in it uh, and off you went. It was pretty straightforward. Now, I did promise myself a quick slurp of the old coffee. So have a quick look. Um, Daytona FPV says... If if it's a quad motor of that side, it should be at least 20 amps. Yeah, especially if you're running 4S, I would expect at least 30 amps, if my honest, there, uh, there Daytona FPV. Um, again, unlike a quad, so in a quadcopter, you have a single battery, uh, goes out to four ESCs and four motors. They don't really ever get up near the top of their peak unless you're using decent quality batteries. Uh, whereas the, in a fixed wing or flying wing, as I'm sure you already know, is that you've got one battery, you've got one ESC uh, and one prop and motor. So it will take as many amps as the, basically the, as the battery would draw. So 25 amps, I do feel is underwhelmed. And I do have a big question mark around that um, for would it cope with 4S on 4 Nacker, especially considering the tri-blade on the back as well. So that's almost like a six by four prop but we're using a 50 by, yeah. Yeah, we're using, what was it, 50, 45 tri-bay props. So very, very curious one with that one. Uh, indeed. Uh, Gilberto, Munzo, good to see you back. 
Thank you, fella. Good to be back as well. Uh, right, there's a really sticky one here. What kind of laws laws do you face when flying FPV? How do you count to these and what kind of places do you fly? I live in Wales and, and would love to fly an FPV about a mile up of a, a rural valley. Is this okay? So Isaac, right, we, we have a set of rules which we need to abide to and obviously you need to abide to as well. Uh, the, the, the goal of being able to fly up a valley uh, I'm sure it'd be an absolute fantastic fella. Uh, I think it'd be an amazing experience in short. So let's put let's put that down on the table to begin with. The, the thing is, is that uh, within the UK, you do have to fly within visual line of sight. And I would urge you uh, perhaps to nip across to the Facebook group. There's a link to that in the video description and just check out with the other pilots uh, to, to get all the facts and details right. But in short, you do need to fly within visual line of sight. You will need a spotter next to you to keep an eye on the model, uh, especially if you are new to FPV ISOC. I would strongly suggest uh, that you find someone who is close to you, which again, wonders of Facebook and the internet. I'm sure you can find somebody who is close to you, which will take you out or come out with you uh, and fly with you in short. And you really do need to that in the, in the early days. Whether you go on to fly that Valley in Wells is completely up to you, sir. Uh, but do apply a very good dose of common sense. And the common sense would be, if you're completely new to FPV, never done anything like that before, work up to it in baby steps. So Isaac, I hope that helps uh, in short. And I'm sure everybody else will uh, correct me on that one as well. Uh, <laughs> James have, may have got it right uh, in the chat. Uh, absolutely. Uh, 25 amps and continuous, um, 30, sorry, and 35 amp burst. Yeah, I think it's enough. Yeah, it's going to be a curious one, Nizril. It's going to be a curious one. Again, I, I, I'm already like half correct tonight. I still think it's grossly overpriced, but... We always hold a final judgment until we get the models in the sky. So we'll get that uh, fair wing in the sky uh, at some point in the imminent future. Like you've kind of already guessed, there's a whole collection of models here for us to get through. Now, this gets on to the last model, which was my little surprise. I don't know if you can see that on the desk. I was really chuffed with this this morning. It's, I don't know if you can hear the rain going on out there at the moment. It's up to like 40, 50 miles an hour wind here at the moment. It's dark and it's raining, it's minging out there. And I bought this one just before Christmas. Now this is the uh, Volantix uh, Firestar or something like that. Sir Andrew Newton uh, reviewed it a while, well, back at the beginning of last year, I think. Uh, and I liked it back then. I was thinking, oh, what might a little Christmas present for Matty uh, just before Christmas? Uh, and I ordered it a bit late to be honest, so I'm not surprised it turned up after Christmas because it's now January the 2nd, uh, which is the time of recording. Uh, so no biggie in, in not arriving before Christmas. Like I said, I was a little bit late. Uh, these are known to be good little models. Like I've seen, I've already seen them fly. Excuse me, not been in this one yet. So I'm gonna get this one open. Um, probably won't be flying at FPV. Might do for shits and giggles, we'll see. Uh, definitely is one of those quiet days like we were chatting about earlier with the F with the uh, 3D flying. Uh, yeah, I can't remember how much I paid for this one. Um, unlike the Fairwing, where I grumbled my, oh, I've, I'm, I'm, and I, I'm going to continue to do that, grumble my ass off about the price of it. I do feel it's grossly over grossly overpriced uh, compared to the other wings which are out. This one, I don't know what I paid for it, and frankly, I don't care what I paid for it. Uh, and that's my point of view on this one because I really am looking for someone which is going to be fun. And I've seen it. Andrew threw this in in definitely less than ideal flying conditions. And with the little built-in stabilizer, it did really well. So this tiny little thing, it has a wingspan of uh, about two hands uh, on the top. Uh, and we'll get this one open. We'll take a quick look. It's, it comes even comes with its own little transmitter as well. Uh, wings do feel a bit dainty. They're a shards of glue floating around all top all that's a curious one i don't have any can you see that on the camera i don't have any little wireless batteries like that shape so uh i can already tell you i might be cutting that out uh to fit uh, i've got fit uh bigger is that a one s yeah one s battery pack uh in the bottom uh to to fit that out uh, so i can put a slightly larger one on there again just turning it upside down uh i can see that we don't have any aileron servos in here but there are there is potential 
for us to put Aileron servos in there. Whether we would do that uh, is a whole different question. I might do that as a later mod. Uh, we'll see how it does to begin with. Uh, but I do like these little uh, support horns or control lines uh, down there. They definitely do stiffen that wing up because I think it would be far too flimsy without them. Uh, we do have some landing gear in here as well. Definitely cute. And like I said, uh, this one was for me. It was a, a late decision for Christmas. Uh, and like I said, I, I wasn't surprised it didn't turn up for Christmas. Uh, and it's definitely going to be a little bundle of fun uh, to take out. What else do we get in the bag? Or in the box? Let's chuck that down there. Little cheapo transmitter. Ooh, a little dedicated antenna. Oh, I'm really looking forward to finding this thing. Uh, trim switches apparently do work. We have... <laughs> oh, oh, I better turn that into beginner mode. Uh, we have beginner's mode uh, on the transmitter. Uh, we have mid... And then we have expert, and I think that is to do with the stabilizer, which is built in there. Uh, there's a fake button on the left-hand side, so I don't just look like what was it? The um, uh, it was an E-flight safe or whatever it was. They, they have a little safe button which you can hit, which it returns. Uh, we have a look. Uh, four AA batteries uh, to go in the bottom. Uh, yep, complete plastic, real chintzy feel to it. Uh, but the sticks don't feel too bad. Uh, and I guess left and right on here. On both sides, we'll do the rudder. I'm guessing. Uh, in short, uh, what else do we get? We get oh, we get several propellers. Always a good sign. Um, you saw earlier at the beginning of this one what I, what happens to my propellers. Uh, we did get a USB charger, which is kind of standard for this type of model. Uh, let's have a quick look. And I guess them. Yeah, it's the it's the little. Um, I've forgotten what those are called now. So like I said, those little white connectors, standard ones for 1S batteries. It only comes with one battery. That is a negative, to be honest. I, I think we all would like a, an extra battery. And uh, I'm just trying to ease this, that battery out, out of there, which is not the easiest thing to do. Come on. All right. Uh, the battery is a 1S 180 milliampere uh, battery with a nice bit of velcro on there. I personally what I would do for my my like I said I've got some bigger 1s battery packs I'll most likely cut out the bottom and stick that stick that up underneath and again That's also going to go kind of hand in hand especially if I stick a little FPV camera on the top as well um, Yeah, it should be good fun. Uh, no, I can't see inside uh, For what service have we got in that way? No, it's got a little stabilizer uh, Oh Hello I thought that sound, I was about to say that motor sounds rough. Uh, the reason why it sounds rough, can you see in there? If you take a close look, there's a little deep, a little brushed motor uh, in there with a tiny little gearbox. And there's a gear on there, so that little motor inside will be screaming its nuts off uh, and then down gearing it to the main propeller, which will give you more torque and the propeller flies slow, uh, slower. I'll tell you what, well, I haven't got any AA batteries, so I can't connect it up. Uh, but like I said, I've seen these fly before. Um, they've been reviewed by other channels before. Uh, and again, I bought it for me for Christmas. So, yeah, really looking forward to flying that one. And I really hope that the weather is going to get a little bit better so I can take it out and fly it. Because sometimes it is, you can have as much fun with a little dinky model like this as you can with, I don't know, the XUAV Clouds, which is a 1.8 meter wingspan model, you know? It's all good fun in short so uh quickly looking at uh, your chat uh, on here uh sir bruce good evening as well take a bow for sir bruce in these and needs uh so a quick look yeah. right right in which case i am gonna wrap up now we will just quickly summarize what we've been uncovered um if i have missed your question uh I've been focusing on the models which we've got here. I do apologize for that. So uh, if you have a question about anything which you've been and seen here, please either ask in the comments section underneath this video, uh, or you could of course ask over in the Facebook group. Again, there's a link to that uh, in the video description for you. Uh, we, what did we start off with? We, oh, we, we had a little bit of a chit chat about 2017, uh, and we've also had that chit chat about 2018 as well. Uh, 2018 won't be as kind as, um, we won't have the same kind of velocity 
of video content coming out uh, for the Rag the Nuts Off channel. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be fired or anything like that. We're not going to have any videos. It just won't be at the same kind of level uh, as we were last year. Again, just to refocus for, for me personally uh, with work and um, some challenges which I've got for this year, which as many of you know, I've already been working on. That's why I went AWOL uh, for several weeks before Christmas because I'm just working to get where I am today. I'm, I'm weeks ahead of myself, which is happy days uh, in short. Uh, we... Uh, it's all about the karma. Full size Sky Hunter. She is down here. Good question. She is down here. And again, so those of you who don't know, I do have a full size Sky Hunter sat here waiting to get built. That is a Eagle Tree Vector, which is hanging out the top of it, which has been set up for a vet uh, for the Sky Hunter. Uh, it just needs to get put together properly. Uh, the the uh, I've got to put FPV on the front. Put needs to put the vector in. Uh, and then ranked wise, but pretty much ready, good, good, good to go. Uh, I've already done the what I can see the wings down there, the wiring looms done. I what else have I done? Yeah, I, it, it just needs finishing off. I, like I said, I've got so many models which are here, which are either on the line, needs to be built, or needs to be repaired in short. And I've got a couple of models which you need to go on and find a new home. So full size Sky Hunter, it is here. I've just not had time to get around to doing it, um, but it. All the major bits, I would say, are now done because the, the, the real ball ache, really, was the wiring looms for the wings. Uh, and the other annoyance was the laminating of the main fuselage, which the missus did uh, just before Christmas. So, yeah, really good question about that one. Uh, fly the little plane now. <laughs> to be honest, I think it probably would fly in this office. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I need to wait to uh, a calmer day for that one and maybe a little bit of a larger space there, Jazzy. But I love... Uh, the um, uh, enthusiasm uh, on there. Uh, let's have a quick look. Oh, wow, Lauren got a full size Sky Hunter kit on RMRC flash sale for $50. Happy days. Happy days. That full size Sky Hunter for me, what was it? 160 some dollars uh, on the Banggood website from China. And they put it in the EU warehouse for something like $80. Something, something, I can't, you'll have to bear with me, it was, it was a while back and the prices were a bit vague in my head. Uh, but basically it was about half the price. Bought it immediately uh, and it's been sat here. It is a work in progress. So, uh, yes, the twin zoo does need, uh, again, I've, uh, so you can see in the chat, Blackbird. Um, like I said, I have got 20 plus models down there which are in different leagues of brokenness. In short, we've got like one of my favourite wings of all of last year. And I'm, I genuinely mean that. And I'm a little bit disappointed to tell you this one that it has been one of my firm favourites, which was the Flying Blade, um, which you can't. Again, like I said, I was, I'm a little bit loath to tell you this one uh, because it supplies so fantastically well. I bought myself a second, which I've used as a slope soaring wing, and it's absolutely brilliant. But I'm loath to tell you this, that it's one of my favourite wings of last year um, because you can't buy them anymore. It's kind of said at the time they were good wings and yeah, unfortunately you can't get them anymore, which is a bit of a, a pain. But that one's down there, it just needs a new propeller. Mini Salon, for example, down there, completely shagged, need to build up a new one, which requires laminating, putting all the wire and looms in and blur. Uh, it's a whole full rebuild, uh, in short, uh, into a new frame. And that one really has had it, so... Uh, and I've got a collection of other stuff down there. So coming back to my point, Blackbird, Twin Zoo, it's down there. It's a great model. I just don't, it's down there because it needs some FPV kit putting in there. So um, Blackbird, if, sorry, um, yeah. Uh, Blackbird Boy, if you're in the United Kingdom, if you're seriously interested in it, shoot us a message on the Facebook. It needs a new home, uh, in short. Uh, and I would be willing to, to most of these to move on so I can get some of my workshop back or get some of my office back because it is absolutely rammed with foam in here. And that's one of the things which I am going to be doing uh, over the next couple, couple of months is really thinning down uh, on the amount of foam which I've got here because you'll have to take my word for it. Um, there is a load of foam in here and so I'm not going to fly at all in short. There's, uh, I'm looking at the EDF Del Delta jet which I've got down there. Flew great in the end once we got the CG right on it, but I'm really not into EDFs, so it needs to find a new home. Uh, the Wag the Hobby King Wago Yak 55, yeah, it flies all right. I'm just personally disappointed because I felt it was overpriced and didn't fly as good as perhaps what I expected it to be. And again, 
any model which you need to add stupid amounts of lead to the nose just to get it balanced is not really right. Um, hey ho, and there's a collection of other ones near which need to find a home. So I will be having a cull over the next couple of months. So anyway, back on to my points. Oh, you're on Leeds. Happy days. Right, uh, coming back, what were, what were we chatting about? We were summarising. We were chatting about 2018. Won't be so as ferocious or have the same kind of velocity this year. That said, I'm still around, still very much into RC, really getting kind of excited about new models, uh, to say the least, <laughs> uh, for them. Uh, anyway, we had the DW Shining uh, 3D model. Looking forward to that one. Uh, just been chipping away at it when I've had us like a spare five minutes, did a bit of glue on it, leaving it and getting back to work. Um, again, I'm very pressed for time at the moment. Uh, so the DW Shining, really looking forward to that one. Looks like it's going to be on par uh, with the Hummer 3D, which I think is a positive. I think that's the Hummer 3D for me is one of the best baselines for a 3D model because it's cheap, it's robust and works, flies really well. Uh, and remember, I do have the the, the S back, which I've got my S back there and I've got a spare up there as well. Fantastic models. Can't recommend them though because one mishap and it will just turn into snow and disintegrate. So I've been very wary on that one because I know the, how fragile that model is. But that shiny looks like it can take a nose punt or two uh, in there. What else do we have? Oh, we have the FTC Hunter as well, the model with the ship packaging and the bendy wingtips. Not really impressed by that at all. At all not. Overpriced, crap packaging, not very good wingtips. It might fly great. Oh, remember, no documentation as well. No instructions in the box got no idea what I'm supposed to do I'm supposed to set that one up in the transmitter it's just got a lead pointing at the top uh, which goes into the board and a battery lead but there's a little circuit board underneath which I presume does some stabilization no documentation at all kind of takes some piss for the kind of money which it cost uh, so that was the FTC Hunter uh, what else did we have we had a, another one in there as well didn't we we had the Fairwing uh, oh no so we had the Skywalker Smart like that one a lot. There are a lot of positives about that wing. Uh, two motors on the ASN, right up my street. How many of you can mention, uh, and I bet it's zero, uh, can mention a pre-molded kit which comes with two motor mounts for uh, twin motors on an FPV wing? First one I've ever seen. Really looking forward to flying that one. Looks like a really straightforward build. The only negative which I could say, and again, remember it was high quality parts in there, nice aluminium mounts to go on the back. The only negative or thing which I could point and go, that's not very good at, was the moulding of the wings. Uh, it could have been like a little bit more foam getting pushed into that mould or being left a little bit longer in the mould uh, so we had a much better finish on them, which I'm not, I need to raise that as a negative, but on the other hand, I'm not that bothered because I might end, well, I'll probably end up laminating that one anyway. So you'll, you'll never see it again and I won't get that bothered about it. So the Skywalker Smart, really looking forward to that one. That one's definitely a thumbs up for me. I hope it flies well. Uh, and the other one which we had was the fair wing. I stand corrected, you can put a 2200 forest pack in there. That was always my concern. I always thought it was going to be uh, a horrible compromise. I felt my attitude going towards that wing in the beginning was that they'd looked at the S800 and made it bad in every single way. I stand corrected, it is not as bad as it was in every single way. You can fit a decent sized pack in there. Camera module on the front is a bit 50-50. I uh, do feel the motor mount is a bit weak on there. Uh, and you it's not plug and play at all. That's a complete lie. Um, you will have to solder the parts up and put them together. Uh, that said, very thin wing profile on it. So it will be a fast one. But also on the flip side, it's also twice as expensive as a Reptile S800 wing. Or was at the time I bought it. So yeah, curiosity on that one. And the other one, which we saw... Is the little Vol Volantrix uh, fin uh, train star, a uh, mini train star. Really looking forward to flying this one. Uh, I think, ooh, I, I'm really torn. I'm really torn. Which one am I most looking forward to flying? Um, I do have this one in my hand. This one is definitely a fly at home one, uh, and as such, means that I don't have to drive anywhere to go flying. So that has big positives. Uh, I think it's the probably the Skywalker Smart to be honest. Um, is the one which I'm really most looking forward to seeing in the sky. Uh, and the reason for that is just straight because it has got two motors on the back. That's going to be happy days, isn't it? A pair of 2205s on the back of that, 6x4 props, 30 amp ESC. Maybe a pair of 4S batteries in the front to give it the amps it needs. Could be bloody good fun. We'll see. 
We'll see. Uh, just looking at your... Oh, you got a pony for Christmas. I want a pony for Christmas. Um, <laughs> I needed I was trying. Sorry. Just seeing the chat going on on the left-hand side. Anyway, that's it from me. Uh, I would like to say, number one, a massive thank you to you for last year. I had so much fun in 2017 with these pieces of foam and you getting involved in everything which I was doing and... Wow, I just thank you for 2017. 2018 is gonna be just as much fun uh, in short. So I would like to wish you a very happy new year. Um, whatever resolutions you've decided to go with, I hope you stick with them. Um, me, I only have one my work stuff put that aside for a moment. I only have one, I need to lose a bit of um, a few pies in short. Uh, that's mainly really my own like resolution if I have one per se. Uh, but with that said, Happy New Year, it's time for me to go. Massive thank you for you to taking the time to, to join me for this live session. Remember, any questions about any of the models which you've been and seen, do keep in the back of your mind. Bought them out of my own money, that's why I feel that I can give you some nice, impartial, unbiased reviews on them. Because um, we have got a right mixed lot here, to say the least. And I've also got, there's a, a Fot Wolf over there. I've also got a Hurricane over there as well, which needs to go out for a maiden, to, well, needs to get built. Uh, I've got a couple other models here, which are sat to go out for maidens as well. So uh, look out for those in the next couple of weeks. So with that said, Happy New Year. It's time for me to go. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this episode. I'm off now. Have a good evening, morning, evening. Afternoon. Cheerios!